Heyo, and what is up, gang? Thank you for checking out Sledgehammer TV tonight. AEW is building anticipation to the Revolution pay-per-view in a fantastic manner. Last night's episode is one of the best episodes they have ever put together. They've seemingly got the ship in the right direction, and everything is very exciting, and it was a very fun show. And it also included a historic and somewhat controversial title change that the whole entire wrestling world is talking about, and and we are going to talk about it as well. You and I together right here and right now. My name is Nick Nightmare and you are watching the Sledgehammer Wrestling Show's AEW Dynamite Review and Reaction Show right here on Sledgehammer TV. Let's do it. <laughs> This, my friends, was a very, very fun show. AEW put on a great show last night, and there's no denying it. From the starting bell, from the opening matchup, right to the finish, the tag team matchup that kicked off this show, which was not so much about the match, but was about the further implosion of the elite regarding Hangman Page and Kenny Omega and all of the nonsense happening there, to the main event with the Eye for an Eye matchup, John Moxley versus Santana in the main event, which was full of fantastic moments and a lot of high drama. The show from start to finish was a real blast. And I give them a great compliment with this. It's just, I got to tip my hat to them because I really wasn't expecting them to get things going this well this quickly. They, they trimmed off all the fat. They got rid of the Nightmare Collective. They got things seemingly all in the right direction. And then they go, and they make Nyla Rose the woman's champion. Now, this is the hottest topic everybody's talking about, and it's very important that I preface everything that I am about to say with this very important statement. I have absolutely zero hate in my heart for Nyla Rose. I have nothing but respect for her. Do you, you guys have no understanding, unless you are training yourself, what it takes to become a professional wrestler. It doesn't matter... At the end of the day, what you, what kind of a person you think you are, what you feel like, what you identify as, at the end of the day, Nyla Rose is a person with feelings and emotions, and she accomplished something great, something that many people will never be able to do in her lifetime. She, what she has done for the first time ever has made a transgendered athlete a champion on a mainstream wrestling program that is available nationwide, worldwide, for the most part. And it's special. And it's important. It's very important. Just, you may not like it. And that's fine. Everybody's entitled to their own opinion. I, myself, have some issues with the whole thing. But at the end of the day, imagine for a generation of people who live the way Nyla Rose lives and does what Nyla Rose does to see her attain these goals and get a championship, it's huge. It's just as big as any ethnicity that has never been a champion finally winning that championship and showing everybody that is just like them that it's possible if you put in the work and you're good at what you do. It's also important that we take a look at the match. The match that she had with Riho last night was probably the best AEW women's match I have seen to date. And you can't take that away from it. It's one of the reasons probably why they decided to go with Nyla Rose as a champion. Another big positive here is that Rio is not the champion. Rio was probably, a, in my best estimation, a very underwhelming debut champion for AEW. You might feel a certain type of way about her. You may love her. You may think she's cute. You may think she's this or that. But what she was, was missing for 90% of the launch of AEW. And I don't care what she was doing in Shimmer or Stardom or New Japan or anywhere else. My eyes wanted to see her in AEW. I didn't get to see enough of her. I don't know why she was made the inaugural champion. 
But that's the way it was. And now that has passed. And they put the title on Nyla Rose. And no matter how you feel about it, it's a good thing for the world in general. And you have to come at it with a sense of acceptance because it doesn't matter at the end of the day what you think or what I think. Our opinions don't really matter. And what we say is not going to have an effect on the show in certain aspects. And this is certainly one of them. All that matters is what AEW thinks is important, and they think that this was the way to go about it. And like I said, it's okay if you don't like it. It's okay to feel uncomfortable about it. It doesn't make you transphobic, and I hate that shit. I've been seeing it all over social media. Anybody that has any even minor criticism. Oh, you're transphobic. You're a transphobe. I am certainly not that myself. I have my criticism about it. I understand both sides of the argument. I just gave you a glowing opening on every all the reasons why you should be a little bit more accepting of it and why we should just move past the initial problem that everybody's having with it. And in case you're ignorant and you don't know, the fact of the matter is Nyla Rose was once a man. She snipped off the dangly parts. She added in some enhancements. She made her face all pretty. She wears makeup and she's got long hair. And she identifies as a woman. So she's considered a woman, and she's wrestling women. But at the end of the day, her basic physiology and her her physical makeup is the composition of a man. So she is generally going to be stronger and bigger, and you got a lot of people coming out and saying a lot of things about this very point. Some of you want to be assholes about it. And that's really what the whole transphobic word is. Transphobic is just a nice way of telling you, hey, dude, you're being an asshole right now. Because how do we start this thing off? At the end of the day, we're talking about a person. This is a person just like you. They might not look like you. They might not live like you. They might have an alternative lifestyle than you. But they're a person. Be fucking nice. Be nice. You can have your criticisms. You can say things in an intelligent, debate-like manner. Don't be a dick. Because that's unnecessary. The hate is unnecessary. The racism or sexism about it, I don't even know what to call it, is ridiculous. And it's unnecessary, so let's stop that shit. Let's stop that shit right now. But you're not wrong if it makes you feel uncomfortable. And you're not transphobic if you're not feeling it. Because I'm certainly not really feeling it. But I have respect for the individual. I know what it takes to become a professional wrestler. I myself had such a hard time in just one year of pro wrestling that now I'm injured to a point where I can't even train the way I want to. So I have respect for anybody that can attain this level. It's important that we talk about this. It's more important than even talking about the show. Because of the way the world is now. This is just part of life. You don't necessarily have to accept it into your own life, but if you're going to watch wrestling and it's going to be part of wrestling, then just accept it and go. Why shit in somebody else's pancakes? You know what I mean? Just let the girl enjoy this moment. I'm much more accepting of this than I am of Tessa Blanchard winning the World Heavyweight Championship of Impact Wrestling, I'll tell you that much. And before we get off this topic and talk about the show altogether... I just want to throw this one thing at you. And again, this is not a hate thing, and I'm not coming at it to attack. I just want to say that I feel personally that maybe it would be better, or would have been better, for Nyla Rose to wrestle the men. Now, I know she identifies as female. She feels like a female. She made herself look like a female, whatever. But like I said, at the end of the day... You're not really built like a female. You're towering over the, most of the females you're facing. And uh, I think people would be more accepting of the character overall if she was wrestling the men. Think of all of the characters we've had in the history of professional wrestling. From Gorgeous George to Adrian Adonis to Goldust and everything in between. Sonny Kiss. Even Velveteen Dream to a point. You have those sexually ambiguous things going on. Androgyny. You know, Adrian Adonis considered himself a female on TV. 
And this guy was once one of the toughest tough guys you would ever see. So it's there's a precedent for that type of a character. And they were pretending to do what Nyla Rose actually did. So I feel like I would be 100% more in favor if I was seeing her wrestle and beating the shit out of the men. Like how, you know, China used to wrestle the men. Remember how much shit China used to get just because she looked like a dude? Nyla Rose actually was a dude. And now it's like you can't even acknowledge that. You're not even allowed to say that or you're transphobic. Calm down. Why can't we have a discussion like people? Bring together all the facts to the table. You formulate your own opinion. And it's your opinion. You're not wrong. Opinions are not wrong or right. They're yours to have. And you're not wrong for feeling any type of way. If you want to be bigoted about it and you want to attack people and say stupid shit on social media and act like a retarded ass backwards redneck about things, then, you know, then yeah, you're a transphobic asshole. But if you, but if you want to talk about it like we're talking about it now, we could sit at the table and have a discussion. I want to know how you guys feel. I know most of you guys know where I'm coming from. And there's a lot of you people that are going to be in favor of it. And I'm sure there's a lot of my sledgeheads that are going to hate it. And you might have even expected me to bring the hammer down on it much harder than than I did. If I even did. Did I bring the hammer down on the situation? I don't, I don't think so. Certainly didn't get the poop hammer for this evening. I just don't understand the amount of hatred I'm seeing. I, I, I don't necessarily like it, per se. But it is what it is. So let's just put the elephant that's in the room in the closet and leave the elephant in there. And let's just move on with our business. Nyla Rose is the woman's champion. It's the way it is. Let's see what they do with it going forward. Hopefully the best thing that could come from this would be for Nyla to help save this woman's division. Because it's been lacking seriously. And now we have a very strong, very powerful woman at the top of the women's division, and they could make it interesting. They could also make it a giant, boring flop. It will be interesting to see where we go from here. Hopefully, everything that I just said didn't fucking offend anybody, because I certainly, like we started, I'm not going that way. I'm not being hateful, and I'm very supportive of her, and I'm glad she's the champion, over Riho at the very least. But it's always going to just have that little hint of butt. You know what I mean? Like, And not butt like the smell of ass, like it's terrible. Like, you know, it's just, well, yeah, she's the champion, but you know, she was once a dude. <laughs> Let's not act like that wasn't a fact. You know, we're just talking facts. We're not talking shit. We're talking facts. All right, so it's always going to just taint it. We spent way too much time on this. It's probably because it's a very sensitive topic, and I want to make sure that my point is coming across clearly, and it might even not have. I could have been all over the place with this. I feel like I said everything I wanted to say. I feel like I said it in a respectful way, and I feel like now is the time to move on from it. AEW, the rest of the show, was not nearly as controversial, but was a whole lot of fun. The Dark Order interrupted the beginning of this show. Evil Uno says, The Dark Order are much more than four. Some of them may be closer than you think, teasing that there's many more members out there, and that they are all awaiting the arrival of the Exalted One. Now, this could definitely be a hint towards a Matt Hardy coming to AEW, or this could just be something furthering along the thing that I think might be more than likely, which is Christopher Daniels turning around and ending up being the leader of this whole thing underneath everybody's nose, which I actually think would be much more interesting, and then Matt Hardy could come in opposite Christopher Daniels, and they could be battling for the souls of AEW or something of, or other, and I think that would be great television. Christopher Daniels is a lot more creepy and charismatic than many of you people that only know him from SCU can actually be. If you know about the Fallen Angel gimmick from TNA and from his previous indie days, you know what I'm talking about. This guy could be a kick-ass heel, he could be creepy as hell, and I will really dig it. And to have Matt Hardy against him, Matt Hardy shouldn't be coming in as a heel. 
He's going to come in. People are going to go ape shit. He should be a baby face. He'll be one of the biggest baby faces on the roster. And then you immediately have a weird cult-like group for him to feud against. And Christopher Daniels is a veteran. Christopher Daniels versus Matt Hardy in the ring would be a great matchup. And I think that's the way to go. I think that's really the way to go. To bring this even further, and don't you guys ever forget that I was the only one talking about Christopher Daniels being in this role before everybody started jumping on that bandwagon a couple of weeks back. It was one of the initial things that I said when we first heard about the Exalted One in the first place. Before Matt Hardy or Luke Harper, many people were not even thinking Christopher Daniels, but we said it here to you guys. And now this evening they took even further steps to prove that point because the announce team even made speculation that it's possible Christopher Daniels is aligned with the Dark Order because he left ringside. He didn't stay with SCU during their matchup for the championships, and he left ringside saying he was going to keep an eye out and keep his buddy safe from the Dark Order, which by the match end certainly wouldn't be the case. The World Tag Team Championship was on the line. Kenny Omega and Hangman Page defeated Scorpio Sky and Frankie Kazarian to retain their championships. This was a very good opening matchup. It was a lot of fun, but like I said, this was a, this match was not so much about the match for SCU, but about the tension that is still escalating within the Elite. The Hangman Page, on multiple occasions, looked like he was going to turn on Omega in the middle of this matchup, building up that that sense of suspense that you just weren't sure and it looked like he was going to clock them but then he would hold back and they would end up going on to retain their championships in a very good, very, very good kickoff matchup. Kenny Omega would hit the combo lariat V-trigger on Frankie Kazarian to get the pin. After the matchup, Hangman Page would go on to celebrate drinking beers with the fans as he's been doing. Kenny Omega would disappear SCU were remaining in the ring and the Dark Order surrounds. Christopher Daniels obviously did not stop them and he did not come out to stop them. But this turned into a very weird WWE-like segment here. One of the first things and maybe the only thing we will bring the poop hammer down on will be this little segment right here. Because they want to build anticipation, and they want us to be excited for this tag team battle royal. So they do a very WWE thing, which is the week before, they get all the tag teams in the ring and have an all-out brawl. We've seen the best friends with Orange Cassidy, we've seen the Young Bucks, we've seen uh, H2, or whatever that tag team is, THQ, TH2... The Hybrid 2, Jack Evans and Angelico, The Butcher and The Blade. And next thing you know, there's a big chaotic brawl hyping up the Tag Team Battle Royal for next week. Very, very Vince McMahon. Very Vince McMahon thing to do. I don't think it was necessary. You don't need to hype up a Battle Royal with involving tag teams that have the high stakes of being able to get a shot at the championships. You just a little bit unnecessary here, but we'll forgive it and we will just move on. We then went on to a promo given by Santana of the Inner Circle, which was delivered with an intensity and a ferocity and a believability that just had you on the edge of your seat. The guy really pulled you in and he got really personal and told some really fantastic stories about his own life and why the attack from John Moxley hurt him maybe even more psychologically than it did physically. And at the end of this whole thing, let's talk a little bit about what he said. He was talking about his father and how his father was blind. This was over 10 years ago when he was in a deep depression. He felt like he was in the dark. And now he feels like that again, thanks to John Moxley. Like we said, he mentioned his father being blind and that's how he felt every day. Santana then mentioned his father passed away that before he could even say goodbye... It was really emotional and really sympathetic and it really got you on the side kind of of Santana and you almost wanted to see him get his revenge, which is kind of a problem because that was a really great babyface style promo. 
by one of the guys on the hottest heel faction in the entire company. Seems just a little off. You know what I mean? The message was just a little bit too clean, I guess. He he should have been more, like, out for vengeance. Just a little bit more on a heel thing. I mean, the story itself was fantastic. It was engrossing. And like I said, it definitely pulled me in. But imagine he was a good guy. And imagine Moxley was the heel. And he gave that promo. Man, he'd have the crowd in the palm of his hands. How do you not feel for the guy? You're not supposed to be feeling for the heel. Which is the only problem with this promo. Otherwise, this was fantastic. This is excellent television. They just got to get their alignments right and, and maybe remember who, you know, this guy's supposed to be a bad guy. We shouldn't be making the crowd feel bad for him. But other than that, this was great. I liked that JR made mention to Santana that maybe he should be Chris, uh, pissed off. He should be Chris off. <laughs> Le Champion, Chris Jericho. Because this is, after all, his fault. He drew first blood, so to speak. He hit Mox with the spike first, which in retrospect is the reason why Moxley attacked Santana's eye with the key to the stolen 50, 70 million thousand dollar car that the inner circle was going to give John Moxley. But Santana says no. He says that is not the case. John Moxley was given the chance to join the inner circle and become part of everything. So when he didn't join, that made him public enemy number one, so to speak. And now he's out to make Moxley really know what it's like not to see because Santana was going to go after that other eye and make John Moxley completely blind. This was good. This was good stuff. That second half of the promo definitely picked up where it should have. The first half was a little bit too babyface for my taste, but it was 100% awesome. Very, very awesome. We had a video package from Darby Allen. He's going to be facing Sammy Guevara at Revolution. He did a promo where he, you know, spoofed Sammy Guevara's little commercial break postcard thing that he does. This was okay. You know, this, it was kind of cool. I liked the last sign, which was a drawing of Sammy Guevara kissing and saying, kissing Jericho's ass gave me herpes. Some funny stuff there. It was a great idea. Great idea, but the execution was not really that good. And I, I mean, I mean that in the slightest way. I mean, I'm just maybe nitpicking at this point because it was a very cool promo. I just thought, eh, you know, okay, let's move on. Which we did to Dustin Rhodes having a match with Sammy Guevara and defeating Sammy Guevara in a very good matchup. And and on most occasions, I would say that we don't need to be seeing 50-plus-year-old veterans getting the win in scenarios over young talent. But considering the story involved, this is good. Sammy Guevara and the Inner Circle have had the upper hand on Dustin Rhodes throughout the entirety of this feud beginning. Jake Hager even broke his arm, which would prompt him to challenge Jake Hager finally following the defeat of Sammy Guevara tonight. He wants Jake Hager's ass. He called him Chris Jericho's bitch and wants to lock up with him at Revolution. And he asked the crowd if they would want to see the match, and they definitely popped for it, but Jake Hager walked off without replying. This is a very interesting matchup that has been booked now for Revolution. Gold Dust and Jack Swagger last locked horns over five years ago in 2013, and it wasn't even on a major program in the WWE. They've wrestled each other countless times in tag team situations, but in one-on-one -on -one scenarios, it only happened one time before in 2013, and we are going to pick up from there. And this is going to be a good match. I think this is going to be a statement for Jake Hager. He's going to have his first match. He's going to want to come out, and he's going to want to do well. Dustin Rhodes is a great guy for him to be going in there against. They have familiarity. They know each other. They're going to pull off a good match. Dustin has been doing some of the best stuff he has ever done. I would, never would have imagined I'd be saying that. Although that's not true, when he was on the roster in the WWE as Goldust, I used to say constantly that he is grossly being underutilized. He should have had a, at least one more final run 
with an Intercontinental Championship. Maybe let him have one World Heavyweight Championship title run. He don't have to win it, but at least let the guy go after it. He was a beloved member of the WWE Universe. He was still kicking ass in the ring. So it really is no surprise that he's tearing it down in AEW in his red and black Dustin Rhodes getup. And I'm into it. Tony Schiavone introduced Britt Baker for an interview segment, which was better than I expected. Her delivery is just awful. I like everything she had to say. Her delivery is just awful. And while it does kind of skirt along the same lines of everything we've been seeing with Bailey, as far as the I'm a role model scenario and trying to use that to just make yourself seem better than everybody else. She's actually doing it maybe a little bit better than Bailey. Bailey seems a little less natural as a heel than than initially comes off. But I thought that everything she had to say here was very cool. I just think she needs to work on her delivery. Other than that, I thought this was fine. Probably the best of all the promos she has given so far. And the more practice she gets, the better she'll get. And maybe we will get to a point where we actually care about seeing Britt Baker in the ring once again. And if she keeps getting the heat that she got here tonight, I think that's going to be maybe a little bit sooner than later. Britt Baker says that y- that Yuka's tooth had decay. It had an abscess. And it needed to come out anyway, so she was just doing her a favor last week when she curb stomped her tooth out of her mouth. She was going down this dental road, which was something akin to Isaac Yankum back in the day, but I enjoyed it. I thought this is a great way to go with the character. She thinks she's better than everybody else. She's going to use things like ripping people's teeth out of their mouth and making it seem like it was for their own good. And that's, that's great. This was good stuff. She once again started ragging on Tony Schiavone. She was calling him Mr. Starbucks, which has really never been explored any deeper than when she says it. I don't think a majority of the people watching know that Tony Schiavone was ever an employee at Starbucks, but that's neither here nor there. It doesn't really matter. She then was going off on the fans, talking about Whataburger, calling them a bunch of fat Whataburger faces. And I don't know what a Whataburger is, because I live here in New York where there is no Whataburger. But if any of you guys in the Sledgehead Army have ever had a Whataburger, (laughs) tell me what it's about. Is it as special as they made it seem? Because the Whataburger got almost a bigger pop than half of the crowd, than half of the wrestlers from the crowd this night. Let me know about the Whataburger, if you know about the Whataburger, because I certainly don't know shit about it. But this was good. Britt Baker said this division is hers. She has three degrees. She was the first woman signed to AEW, and what she did last week was make a statement. And this was fine. But then Nyla Rose came out and defeated Rio to win the world, not the world, to win the women's championship, the women's world championship, and made a statement of her own. And we already talked in length about that at the beginning, so we are not going to get back into that. But this as we mentioned before, was a very, very good match. These these two had great chemistry. It reminded me a lot of watching like an Awesome Kong versus Gail Kim back in the day in TNA when they were kicking ass in the women's division, unlike anybody else at the time. And I enjoyed the match. So when the match is that good, you can't really shit all over it, now can you? What you can shit all over is that AEW makes one huge mistake. And you know what? We're bringing back the poop hammer for this one. We're poop hammering this mistake big time. Because you can't have Nyla Rose win the championship and then go back to the locker room and on her way back get get tugged. Why can't I speak tonight? Get hugged by Tony Khan and then have a confrontation with Kenny Omega. Rio's boyfriend, best friend, whatever their relationship is. I don't know the details of it. I do know that they are linked somehow pretty closely. Or else why would Nyla Rose even get in Kenny's face? It has to mean more than just, haha, I beat up your friend and now I took her belt. But we wouldn't know. We wouldn't know what she had to say. We wouldn't know what she would say to the rest of the women that she passed and did a promo against on her way to the locker room to celebrate her championship victory because they did all this in the picture-in-picture. 
And you see, this is the type of stuff that you need to show on TV. It's almost like that old saying that Dusty Rhodes had an old saying, which is if you're in the ring and you have a microphone in your hand and you're going to say something, put the microphone to your mouth and say it. Don't hold the microphone down and ramble. And If you want to say something to the guy, pick up the microphone, excuse me, and say it. And the same thing here. We got things being said. We got moments happening. Let us hear what's happening. That's way more important than even seeing some of these matches that we're seeing. Building the story is just as important as putting on good matches. So I was really, really pissed off that this went on during the picture in picture. You have no idea what was said. I'm sure maybe some of the people in the live audience maybe were treated to the audio. If you were there or you know what was said, please fill the rest of us in because we wouldn't know because they picked a terrible time to do all that. Why they couldn't have went to commercial and then came back to Nyla doing that whole thing so we could hear everything. I don't know. We had an interview with Chris Jericho, Mr. Jericho. He called John Moxley human trash. He said he's going to give Moxley a title match at Revolution anyway. He said he had a surprise for Moxley next week. He scoured the world for a bounty hunter and found Jeff Cobb to give John Moxley a tour of the islands and a dose of reality. He said he will see Mox in hell and we got a preview video, preview package of Jeff Cobb. Some of you might not know Jeff Cobb. I know of Jeff Cobb from his days in Lucha Underground. He was actually the main reason I watched the show altogether. He had a character known as Matanza, which was my favorite thing about that show. The Tour of the Islands is one of the coolest moves in all the professional wrestling. The guy's got a great look, and it is important for all of you guys to know that he has not signed on long-term with AEW. This is a short-term deal. It might even be a pay-per-appearance deal. They are bringing him in to handle John Moxley going in to Revolution, and I don't think we will see him after that. There are a few concerns I have going into this. I just don't think they're going to make Moxley lose on the road to Chris Jericho, but having Jeff Cobb come in just to lose to Moxley is not indicative of the type of character Jeff Cobb is. This guy is a walking, talking monster. He is unbelievable in the ring, and consequently, he's one of the nicest guys I've ever met in pro wrestling. He came through House of Glory one time. I was just a fan at the time. I wasn't training or part of the company at all, and I happened to be in the bar section of the Elks Lodge. Was it the Elks Lodge? Yeah, I believe we were at the Elks Lodge. And he came into the bar to get himself some refreshment, and he was nice enough to talk to me. We discussed a little bit of pro wrestling. I told him how much I enjoyed his work in Lucha Underground, and he was very, very giving of his time, and he's a wonderful person, which is why it's hard for me to see him as a heel, but he is a great, great heel. He is an awesome guy. The the one thing I I didn't really like about this is the way that Jericho just kind of casually revealed that we were having Jeff Cobb and maybe had he not shown up at the end of this show I wouldn't feel so strongly about that and maybe you should have just allowed him to show up unknown unannounced out of nowhere to do what he was going to do at the end of the show and then you could have had Jericho tell everybody who he was next week and that they're going to have a match and, and, and whatever. Or even after the show, after the attack tonight, and now next week you got to face this guy. I don't know. I felt like it was a little weird to have Jericho announce this to everybody. But other than that, I'm glad Jeff Cobb is around. He's I, I'm hoping he signs for a little bit longer than a couple of appearances. But as of right now, he's not set in stone as part of the elite, as many of you guys might have been led to believe by some of these ridiculous wrestling journalists and news outlets out there that like to report on things first before they get facts. But that's just what I seen before we hit the record button today, and I'm letting you know. Brandy Rhodes came out on commentary. She apologized to the commentary team for her actions in the past and then went on to play a babyface 
wife of Cody Rose, which is perfect because that's exactly what she is. And I was fine with it. She actually did great on commentary. And the team said everything that happened before was all water under the bridge and welcomed Brandy with open arms. Why she would want to be sitting out there during an MJF match. I don't know. Obviously she was there to allow for some heat to build between her and and MJF to keep Cody's name on the show, so to speak, this week. And MJF would have a fantastic singles match with Jungle Boy. My favorite match of the night. The only issue with this match is both of these guys are so tremendously popular. Even MJF as a heel, he is way, way over with the crowd. Almost just as over as Jungle Boy. So at times it's hard to really know who the crowd is rooting for because everything that both of these guys do is just great to everybody. MJF's the best heel in the business. Jungle Boy has got a great push beneath him right now. and He's got some momentum and he's great in the ring. I, I really enjoy his work. And this match was one of the best matches they had on this show since the beginning. This is a great match for MJF. Great match for Jungle Boy, even in defeat. And it was only due to the interference of Wardlow that Jack Perry was able to best MJF to begin with. This was a very, very good match, and I enjoyed it. I also enjoyed when Cody Rhodes took a look at Brandy from across the arena and screamed at her, Hey, Brandy, you could have had a real man, and then grabbed his junk and honked it at her. To which JR kind of almost had a conniption and kept telling him, Shut up! It was great. It was really good stuff. I really enjoyed it. MJF also clocked, clocked Jack Perry in the head with that diamond ring, the dynamite diamond ring, which was given to him by Wardlow. And then he hit the double cross. This one's for you, Cody, for the win. Good stuff. Really good stuff. We had a training video for Pac who said that the word on the street is that Omega has been on the decline, which a lot of people were saying before he won the World Tag Team Championship, but since then, I wouldn't say that so much. He said Kenny hasn't been the same since Pac choked him out in Chicago. That's why he's been ignoring his friends. Pac also said in two weeks, Kenny Omega is one lucky bastard because he gets to go 30 minutes with the best wrestler in the world. I love these different vignettes that they are giving to guys like Pac and Darby Allen. Some of them are better than others, and Pac's every time so far has been stellar. Really good stuff. Really fits his his personality, the way that he's coming off, and the way that they're filming it. I'm really, really enjoying what the production team is doing with the promos, the pre-tape promos. Really, really good stuff. We had some announcements for next week. The Lucha Brothers will be taking on Omega and Page for the Tag Team Championships once again. Dusty Rhodes will face Jake Hager at Revolution. That was made official. We've seen a recap of everything leading up to tonight's main event. And then Chris Jericho, Jake Hager, and Sammy Guevara were shown entering a luxury box while Judas played throughout the arena and the crowd now every single week sings the entire first chorus of the song. Chris Jericho can't do nothing but smile about it, and it's great. I get into it. I even want to sing the song along with them. It's really like pro wrestling magic. It's just something that can only happen in wrestling, and it's really cool to see. John Moxley defeated Santana in a really, really good, really hard-hitting, almost hardcore style of matchup. But John Moxley would come out the victor here in the end. He would go and bite the eye of Santana, trying to gain the advantage in this thing. <clears throat> Excuse me. But then he hit the paradigm shift for the pin. This was a very fast-paced, very hard-hitting matchup. But at the end of the day, the match would be a non-entity. It wouldn't matter at all to John Moxley or anybody else because the main purpose of this matchup, as you could probably have assumed, would be for the inner circle to attack John Moxley, which they did and got the better of John Moxley before 
even calling out for Jeff Cobb to come down to the ring. He hit the tour of the islands on John Moxley and then posed with the inner circle as AEW fades to black. And everything tonight was just really, really good stuff. A lot of good ideas. Some of the execution was spotty. The controversy with Nyla Rose is what it is. You feel how you feel about it, and it's okay. It's okay to dislike it. Just don't be an asshole. Remember she's a human being, and don't be a disrespectful dick. AEW put on a really good show tonight. I think I probably said that about a hundred times. That's one of the problems with reviewing AEW is that they don't really give me a lot to go on as far as, you know, some of the things to bring the hammer down on. But we always find something, don't we? And I thank you guys for being with me here again for our Thursday night AEW review. We are going to do an NXT TakeOver preview and prediction show for TakeOver Portland this Sunday where we will do a review slash preview. So if you're waiting for my NXT review, have no fear. It will be up tomorrow afternoon before we bring the hammer down on the worst show in all of professional wrestling, SmackDown, which will be happening tomorrow night on Valentine's Day. Much to the chagrin of all of us, just to break your heart, just to make your Valentine's Day completely suck, we will get to see Otis and Mandy, and that should be pretty entertaining. But other than that, what are we going to see? Roman and Baron Corbin in a candlelight dog food dinner dash? I don't give a shit. But we can find out tomorrow when you tune in for that review. Thank you, as always, for being a member of this family. Don't forget, if you are not already a subscriber, which I don't know why you wouldn't be if you've been watching me for over 40 minutes talking about this AEW stuff and you don't hate my guts for any of the things that I said about Nyla Rose, hit that subscribe button right now. Become one of the over 2,000 plus that know when you want your wrestling reviews bullshit-free, full of honesty... And respect that Sledgehammer TV is the place to be. Don't forget to hit that like button if I made you laugh, if I made you cry, if I made you understand why. It's okay to be on the fence about things and it's okay to dislike certain things even when it's on a show that was as good as tonight's AEW. Smash that thumbs up. Up and then share this video with each and every one of your wrestling buddies all over the wrestling world, especially if they need to find out the truth about things here in AEW as well. That, my friends, is all we have for the AEW review tonight. My name is Nick Nightmare. This is the team. Thor the Sledgehammer, the official Sledgehammer of the Sledgehammer Wrestling Show, his tag team partner, the World Heavyweight Champion. For all the microphones in all the world, Mr. Blue, the Snowball Microphone, the most important member of the team, as always, is each and every one of you. And if you guys missed anything on the channel this week, there will be links in the annotations up above. The Raw review is there and everything else that your little wrestling heart desires. And don't forget to be on the lookout for everything as the weekend rolls on with more and more wrestling to talk about. But we love it. And that's why we do it. That, my friends, is going to do it. And we are out of here. And we will see you next time right here on your new favorite wrestling show, The Sledgehammer Wrestling Show, only on Sledgehammer TV, right here on YouTube.com. Boom. <laughs>